and welcome to Little Learners. Today we're going to be looking at in the moment planning or planning in the moment. Before we get started, don't forget to click that like button if planning in the moment is something you are interested in learning about or if you find this video helpful. And if you want to join the Little Learners family and see more videos just like this, please do click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get into it. So, in the moment planning, in a nutshell, what is it? Well, it's pretty much an approach to planning that allows children to play with whatever they want to for however long they choose to in whatever way they choose to play with it. And I suppose when you know what in the moment planning really is, then it is that simple. But let's take a look at this and break it down a bit so we can make sense of this. Because if you don't really know anything about in the moment planning, you may just have a picture in your head right now of children running around screaming and it being absolute chaos. So let's look at in the moment planning a little bit further. In the moment planning is all about following a child's interest and planning a topic or an, a, an activity or just a learning opportunity in that very moment rather than pre-planning these activities beforehand. So we have the child's interest when you're observing them, you notice something that they are interested in when they're playing and sometimes that's known as the child's spark. You then decide how you can extend that play and learning for them. So you plan in the moment. This is sometimes known as your teachable moment. And then finally, we have documentation. So instead of writing all your plans beforehand, you're going to record your observation afterwards. And we'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. So I know the idea of having nothing pre-planned can be quite daunting for practitioners, but there are lots of benefits to this. One really crucial part of in the moment planning is high engagement. Children need to be engaged to learn. And as practitioners, we know that there is no better way to get children engaged and excited about a topic than following their interests. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. What do you need in order to make in the moment planning work in your setting. First of all, we need an enabling environment. So we need an environment in which children can access all of the resources that they want to. They need to be able to just free flow around anything that they're doing. They need to be able to use the outside and the indoors. We need to have resources that are appropriate for their age and stage. Activities that they can access not just physically, but also developmentally. And we need lots of open-ended resources. So for example, something like blocks can be great because children can decide what they want to build. They can decide what those blocks become. Rather than having a toy house that they play with, they can build a house, but they can also build a spaceship. They can build a horse stable. They can build a zoo. They can build whatever they like. So that kind of idea of having more of an open-ended resource for the children to be playing with. Next, we need meaningful relationships. Children need to feel secure in their relationships with the practitioners around them and especially with their key person. If a child doesn't feel secure in their relationship with you, then it's going to be very difficult for them to show an interest in anything or really be confident in choosing activities to do and really engaging a lot with their play because they don't feel secure. So we need to make sure we have meaningful relationships with these children. We also need clear boundaries and expectations. Just because we don't have things pre-planned and children are free to play with whatever they want, it doesn't mean that we don't have clear expectations, rules and boundaries to keep children safe and in order to keep our day running the way it needs to. However, we also need as few interruptions as possible. So during child initiated play, which when it comes to in the moment planning should be always, there should be no pre-planned adult led activities. It should just be child initiated play as much as possible and then teaching in that moment. So we need very few interruptions. So for example, if children normally go out for a music lesson, why can't the music teacher come and integrate their music teaching with what the children are doing in the setting already. 
we have interruptions for lunchtime and home time. But apart from that, think about how many more interruptions you actually need. Do children need to stop for their snack time or can you just have a rolling snack time that children can just go and get their snack whenever they want to? The next thing we need is observation. So as the practitioner, you need to be observing the children at all times to find out what their interests are and to find that spark that you can then extend and create a teachable moment from. It's also important to know when you're observing when you should step in and extend this learning and when you should just hold back a bit and let the child continue with their play and their own learning. And finally, for planning in the moment, we need to plan in the moment and teach in the moment. So we notice that child's spark and that interest and we decide how we can extend that interest by asking lots of open-ended questions, by joining in with their play, but still letting the child initiate that play and kind of dictate how the play is going to go. So if you're still finding this all a little bit abstract, let's take a look at how you might document what you've done afterwards. Now, I want to be very clear that in the moment planning is not about having lots and lots and lots of written plans down. It's not about lots of recording, but of course we want to record the observations that we've done so that we can see how children are progressing. But of course we do want to document some of the observations that we've done and the learning that the children have done. So when you're doing this, you may have a very simple sheet, something like this. So you might have a section called observation or child's interest or spark. Then you'll have a section about what you did. So your teaching in the moment, your teachable moment. And then you might have another section about the outcome, what happened as a result of what you did. So let's look at an example. So we have some children playing at the mud kitchen and maybe they're rolling their mud into balls and pretending to put it in the oven and saying they're making cakes. So perhaps then the practitioner might come over and then we have some questioning in order to extend that play and learning. So some questions you might ask could be, what flavor is your cake? What kind of cakes are you making? How long does it take to make your cakes? What do you put in your cakes? And then you might want to extend the play even further by asking if you can buy one of the cakes. So then we've got this kind of cake shop scenario where children are making the cakes and then selling them to you, deciding how much you need to pay for them and you're continuing that role play. And then you'll write about the outcome. What happened after that? So maybe the children decide that they want to invite more children to come to their cake shop and they take on the characters of cake shop owners or chefs or waiters and invite other children over to buy cakes and continue developing their role play. So that's just one example of how in the moment planning can help to extend children's learning and can still be really valuable for supporting children's development and progress. We didn't need a pre-planned activity, so using in the moment planning means children are constantly engaged and interested in the topic that they're learning about because we're coming at it from the perspective of the child rather than giving the child an activity or a topic and trying to get them interested in it. We are going to them and their interests that they already have and using those as teachable moments. So this has been a bit of an introduction to in the moment planning. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. If you want to know more about in the moment planning, obviously this was quite a general summary, then let me know in the comments below. If you do in the moment planning in your setting, then please let us know in the comments below. Tell us what you think about it and how it works in your setting. If you don't like it, why not? If you do like it, then why? let me know in those comments. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you can see more videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.